The gain or trim control can be found in the preamp block of your mixer. It's usually the first control right at the top of each channel. Have you ever wondered what to set the gain or trim control to other than just turning it up until you hear what's on the channel? Or setting them all to some arbitrary position like straight up? Did you even know there was a gain control? Well, every channel on your mixer has a gain or trim control, though Yamaha has taken to calling it HA for head amp on their digital mixers. We call it the HA. The gain or trim or HA controls a small amplifier called a preamp that will add gain to amplify the small incoming mic level signals or even reduce or trim an incoming line level signal which has already been preamplified. Setting the preamp level is critical in order to provide the optimum signal level that the circuits in the rest of your mixer were designed for. What you're really trying to do is amplify the signal as high as you can above the noise level of the circuitry and still leave room for every peak to be below the level of distortion. I'm surprised at the number of sound techs who act like the gain level is really not that important. They just turn it up enough to make some sounds come out. I've even seen the technique of putting all your faders at zero and using the gain controls to create the mix levels instead of using all those nice faders to do that. So here's how it really should be set on every channel. First, you need some sort of signal to check. If you're set in the piano channel, make sure someone's playing the piano. If it's a singer's mic, someone needs to sing or at least talk at a decent level to simulate singing. Since a lot of mixers don't have a meter on each channel that shows the incoming signal level, you have to use the PFL or solo button to display it on the large main meters. If you have meters on each channel, there's no need for this PFL part. Just watch the level on each channel as you set the gain. Now, while someone plays the piano or whatever on each channel, you need to press the PFL or solo button for that particular channel, like this. Make sure you only press one PFL or solo button at a time, otherwise the main meters will display the level of multiple channels added together. That's not what you want. Watch the main meters, or the individual ones if you have them, and using the gain or trim control, adjust the channel's level to dance around zero. If your mixer's analog, zero is somewhere in the middle of the range on the meters, and it's sometimes the last green light before things turn yellow or amber. What you want is to set your signal level to dance just above and below the zero, like this. If you're lucky enough to have a digital mixer, zero is a completely different thing. On the meters of a digital board, zero is all the way to the top, or full scale. In the digital world, this is as high as things can go, period. Everything else is a negative number below zero. So on a digital mixer, you use a negative number as your zero level. There are lots of disagreements about this, but I like using minus 20 as my zero level. So set your signal level to dance around minus 20. I'll leave the arguments about why I use minus 20 for another video. So set the gain or trim to have each channel dance around zero on an analog mixer, or minus 20 if you have a digital mixer then move on to the next channel. This is a process that should be integrated into your sound check. And because pressing PFL doesn't affect the main mix, you should check these levels throughout the performance too. Also, since performers play or sing louder after the real performance starts than they did in the sound check, I usually set my channel levels a little lower than zero to allow for the inevitable jump in level when the real thing starts. And sometimes there are channels that setting the level at zero is impractically high, like on a hi-hat mic, for instance. So I just try to get a reasonable level out of those. Setting the gain level properly on each channel is the first step in making a mix that sounds good. And I've often said that while it may only make a few percent difference on each channel, all those little percents add up when you combine them. I'm Greg Hill for AV Genius.